Every year, billions of dollars are spent on subsidies that are driving the destruction of our ecosystems and pushing species to extinction. These harmful subsidies promote practices that wipe away our forests, pollute the air we breathe, and leave our oceans depleted. The subsidies come in many shapes, such as tax breaks, direct payments, or other government supports for sectors including transport, energy, water, and construction. They often target socioeconomic goals. But this assistance can create unintended harm to the natural world. Now, nations are waking up to how this public money is bankrolling our own extinction and the urgent need to reform and remove harmful subsidies for the sake of our planet and people. The OECD estimate that 391 billion US dollars in subsidies and other government support to agriculture contribute to biodiversity loss through the expansion and intensification of production. These practices are not just harming the environment, but humans too. Harmful subsidies channeled towards the fishing industry are estimated at $35 billion per year through tax preferences and income support, causing pollution and overfishing. And the fossil fuel sector continues to receive significant subsidies. For G20 countries, production and consumption subsidies average over $600 billion per year. Harmful subsidies are not exclusive to these industries. In fact, many subsidies are country-specific. So it lies with each nation to recognize what these unique subsidies are and ask how they can be reduced or redesigned without impacting economies, even strengthening them, while meeting SDG targets. We can preserve biodiversity while driving economic development and supporting the most vulnerable groups. In 2013, coffee production in Vietnam was characterized by overexpansion. So the government established a program that gave farmers access to credit with conditions to incentivize greener farming practices among coffee growers. These conditions included training in green production and planting on suitable land. Rather than harming production, participating coffee farms saw their profits increase by an average of 23%. At the turn of the millennium, direct payments to farmers in Switzerland had been conditional on good environmental practices, but ecological targets were not being met the Swiss government reformed its agricultural payments policy, but with a system of transitional payments to make the reform socially and politically viable. The quality of biodiversity ecological compensation areas have increased significantly. The leading cause for the substantial loss of wetlands in Austria has been their conversion to cropland for agriculture to counteract the loss of biodiversity, subsidies for the drainage of wetlands for agricultural cultivation were removed, resulting in net gains for biodiversity and ecosystems that benefit people. Economic incentives, information dissemination, and compensation were critical to success. Such case studies provide new perspectives on the repurposing of harmful subsidies but changes to the subsidy system can't happen overnight. Long-term results can only be achieved through an integrated analysis of environmental, economic, nutritional, and social objectives that require political support from various stakeholders. Balancing a reduction of biodiversity impacts with short-term productivity loss and related social impact especially in developing countries, is a major challenge. In many cases, a nature-positive incentive may be needed for the transition period to support vulnerable socioeconomic groups. 
Unless significant action is taken, these harmful subsidies may ultimately outdo our efforts to tackle the global biodiversity and climate crises. Our biodiverse world depends on reforming and reducing these harmful supports. This is the nature of subsidies.